Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Ithakwas Bane covering all manner of tabletop gaming. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, add comments, and ring the bell to be notified of future video uploads. The NFL season has started again. Some of us are getting excited about that. And in this episode, I would like to bring to your attention a new game from Cesar Capacle. I have featured his games on the channel before, but this is his new, well, I mean, if you're American, it's just football, but it's an American football game, which is very much a narrative card game. It is not a simulator. So that's just a little warning I need to put out there straight away. If you are an American football fan, a sort of typical American football fan, you're into the stats, you're into the strategy, the tactics, whether to use nickel dime, whether to use a pass or rush. Um, this is not that kind of game. This is a pretty simple card game with very interesting mechanics, but it has a very abstract um view on the american football game or like i say if you're american it's just football um it is designed to capture the raw emotion and drama of the final moments of a championship football game and to quote cesar here numbers fade into the backdrop points yards or seconds are abstracted with cards. The mechanics are a vehicle for storytelling, for evocative moments of decision-making, tension, and glory. Now, the narrative element of the game is there. It is definitely something that you can use when you're playing, but it is not necessary to enjoy the game. If you're not heavy on the role-playing aspect of games. If you just want a simple card game to play, you don't need to have the narrative element. But in this game, there are some, some very nice narrative elements to kind of really generate a story, generate an atmosphere around the game that we're playing. Um, what else does Cesar say? Uh, the card play, while focused on supporting the narrative, also presents intriguing tactical choices, mirroring the critical decisions made in real-life games. It's a blend of strategic card play and <laughs> riveting narrative arcs, well, depending on how good a storyteller you are, <laughs> using prompts to ignite your imagination at every turn. Now, when I first got this game, I did play with the whole narrative thing, trying to explain everything that I was doing, creating a story around it, and the game lasted a long time. Uh, I think what Cesar recommends and what I think I would recommend is that you leave the narrative element to the key points of the game. Now, this game is available on Itch. At the time of recording, it is on sale. I think you get 25% off. And you get quite a few elements in the package. First of all, you get the illustrated book. Now, I have not done this book any justice whatsoever. I printed it out sort of spread format like this, but let, let me put it this way. If you can print it out properly, if you can afford the ink and print this out properly, it is it has been designed in such a way that it reflects a sports magazine. It truly is a beautiful book, a beautifully designed rule book that really does look and feel like a magazine. And like I say, I haven't done it justice because I wanted to save ink. <laughs> but I'll, 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 as I've been talking, I'll have been putting out some pictures of the actual, you know, the professionally printed version. It looks amazing. Uh, 44 pages, um, does have hyperlinks if you want to use the PDF. Um, however, you also receive in the package a print-on-demand coupon where you can purchase, I think it's Lulu, I think it's using Lulu, um, but where you basically get it for um, at cost. So you get like a little coupon to give you a print-on-demand at cost of 
the book itself. And like I say, if it wasn't for the shipping costs, I would definitely have done this. This is definitely one game where you want to have that if you can afford it. Um, what else? You also get um, a PDF to print out a custom deck of cards because that is what you need to play this game. No dice, no pencils, no tokens, just a deck of cards. But it does have its own custom deck of cards which have the little narrative prompts on them. I'll put some pictures up. Um, you also get, as well as the print and play version, the PDF, which you can print out by yourself, you also get another coupon to get the, uh, the deck of cards printed professionally at cost. It's all in the package. Um, what else? Um, there is also a play mat. Now, the play mat is not necessary. You can just play on a table as long as you know where the cards are going. But the play mat makes it very easy to see where all the cards are going to be going. Now, this is the full cover. Sorry, full cover. Full color playmat. If you don't want to do that, you can just print out black and white on a couple of sheets of A4. Perfectly usable. And again, in the package, you also get a print-on-demand coupon for a neoprene version at cost. All of this is included in the package. What else do you get? Okay, you get two more things. First of all, you will get a set of rules, which is text only. It does the job, but it doesn't look anywhere near as nice as the real rule book. But again, if, if printing's an issue, then the text only version has everything in there. But it doesn't have all the, all the glitter, the pizzazz, all the wonderful, wonderful design and layout that Cesar has done. Uh, and there's one more thing that you get in the package, and that is a free access to a virtual tabletop platform which is fully equipped for all of your online gaming yes you get an online version of this um i think it's a free platform so it doesn't cost you anything else now cesar has actually done a video going over how to play the game using the vta or the vtt the virtual tabletop um i'll, I'll put a link down in the description for his video uh, but I'll be using the actual physical game and the cards to explain you know, how the game plays um, and to show you, you know, all the different things that happen. Now, like I say, if you want to add the narrative elements, it does make the game a lot better. But if you're simply interested in the card game, no problems whatsoever. It is a lot faster. Um, I'll be doing some narrative, but not all the narrative. Now... You can use the custom cards which have the prompts, the narrative prompts on the cards. If you want to use a normal deck of cards like I'm going to be using, you also have in the rule book, if I can find it, there is a page which has the prompts for each card. Now what I have done to help me in the video is I've actually printed out that page a little bit bigger, but I've also done it in negative format. So... The original format's kind of really dark and would use a lot of ink. So what I did is I converted it into like an, a negative format. And what I'll be doing is I'll be, I'll be putting this to the side so I can easily reference. So when you're playing the game and you draw the cards, you can easily see, what's this? Jack of hearts, jack of hearts, history, knock. Hmm. So that, those prompts are used for you to kind of generate some narrative, generate some story in terms of how the game's playing. And what you'll find is that there will be two prompts per card. One is more positive and one is per, uh, more negative. But like I say, um, I'll be using that sparingly as I show you how to play the game. But if you're really into solo RPGs, if you're really into narrative or journaling, definitely these, uh, these will really help you to... Um, to create a good story on how the how the game is playing. Now, the rule book is laid out, like I say, just like a sports magazine. It's very, very nice. But it's also laid out in terms of overview and then going through all the different stages of the game. So to start with here, you get to you are told what you need to play, the different ways of playing solo, 1v1, or group mode. I think it has been designed primarily as a solo game. But Cesar has included different ways of playing if you want to play with your friends. Um, there's this little section on the setup and then on the general gameplay. Now, the game revolves around 
the theme of American football, but you don't necessarily need to have a lot of knowledge of American football to play the game. You need to have, I would say, a basic surface knowledge. So you need to know, for example, um, what the down sequence is. You need to know in terms of how to score, the different types of scoring. Um, in this game, you only have uh, touchdowns and field goals. Um, you don't have the other uh, ways of um, um, scoring. Also, in terms of the game, like I mentioned earlier, it's not a simulation. You don't have all the different um, tactics. You don't have the different lineups. So there's no nickel or dime. There's no shotgun. There's, there's, there's nothing of that. It's all abstracted within the actual card play, which is very simple and fast once you get the hang of it. Um, and also once you remember which decks you need to take cards from. That's sometimes the, the area that I forget. Um, so you've basically got um, down, down phase. You've got some narrative here, again, to help you create that story. Um, the clash phase, basically you... You will do some, some card mechanics, some card manipulation, and then you will do the clash to find out what happened after all that work. You've also got special rules when you're at fourth down. Uh, sometimes you can lose control of the ball, things like fumbles or potential interceptions. So that was also covered here under live ball. Uh, and then after you have done a certain number of plays, you can decide to try and score. And with that, there are, I mean, it's essentially the same sequence, but slightly different in terms of the number of cards for touchdowns and field goals. And it's all listed here, what can go right, what can go wrong, and it's all based on cards. After you score, there's a couple of options, and you also have this thing called the spotlight pile and that's for spotlight moments um, these cards will basically allow you oh, what's the what's the best way of putting it more chance of succeeding at something later on so you can save up cards here to kind of help you later on down the game um, there's then there is um, a very very simplified opponents phase when your opponents get the ball Clock management, again, we'll go through this as we start playing the game. It's very important that you keep a, a, an eye on the clock and the time. And then you've got the end game, what happens at the end of the game. Now, to set up the game, it's very simple. I'm going to show you how the rules work as we play through. I may not be able to cover everything because I don't want this video to be my usual sort of one hour plus. <laughs> but setup is very simple. You have a deck of cards and you need to have two jokers. Now the two jokers are going to represent, they're gonna represent indicators. One of the jokers is gonna represent what down it is. So is it first down, second down, third down, fourth down. The game tells you when you need to advance the down indicator or when you, when you can reset it to first down. Um, the clock, this game is two minute warning. It's all about that last two minutes where your opponent has just scored and it's up to you now to score higher to win the game. So you've got two minutes left. Now, you will be playing with a, a standard deck of cards and this is going to be placed in your action deck location here. Now, one of the cards, let me just quickly shuffle. These have been shuffled, but I'll just shuffle them again. You will be doing a little bit of shuffling throughout the game. So we've shuffled the cards very roughly. One of the cards will be placed in the away score pile. Now again, the actual numbers, the values, whether you're winning 20 to 17, 13 to 10, doesn't matter. It's just relevant in terms of how many cards you have here. At the moment, the away team is winning. You are the home team. You need to score more than them to beat them. And when you get to do scoring, one uh, you, for a field goal, you'll get one card. For a touchdown, you get two cards. At the end of the game, whoever has the most cards here is the winner. Now, from this action deck here, you'll be using these cards to represent your, 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 your plays. They'll also be used to represent things such as time delays. Now, once you've gone through the deck you will rotate the time of a clock one, one way. So, for example, here, two minutes is now one minute 30. Once you go through the deck again, you rotate again. You've got one minute left. 
You go deck, through the deck a third time, you've got 30 seconds left. You go through the deck a fourth time, game over, what's the score? So this clock is represented by the amount of times you go through the action deck. Four times, game is over. Now, the game plays using your action deck. And to begin with, you are going to be constructing your play. Yes, it's a two-minute warning. You've got the ball. The opponents are leading. The away team is leading at the moment. And we've got to try and score some more. So we have to construct plays. And this is, happens in this field zone. You're going to be playing a number of cards to represent the strategy and the content of what you're going to be doing. So you have the call will be the first card. Huddle, snap, handoff or read, run or pass. And what you'll be doing is you're going to be revealing cards from the action deck onto the field zone. Now, the first card doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what that first card is. Okay, that's the call. What you can do is start to use the narrative. So the four of hearts, we have got finesse or fear. So maybe I want to add some narrative here. Maybe I want to actually start creating a story about how we're going to, to try and score and win. So maybe in this first play of the two-minute warning, at the end of the fourth quarter, maybe I'm thinking of um, a, a finesse play, something which is very subtle, maybe some kind of fake where I fake a handoff to the running back and I, I move over to the side maybe to throw to one of the wide, wide receivers. Yeah. So that, that could be what it does. Now, like I say, when, when you look at the narrative elements of the cards, there is normally a positive and negative. And like I say, the four of hearts is finesse or fear. So if I'm having some problems, maybe later on during the play, maybe I could have chosen the, the negative word, fear, to kind of explain what, why it's going wrong. Yeah? So when you're creating a play, the first card doesn't really matter that much, except for narrative. But from now on, I'm going to be drawing four more cards, one at a time. And what I'm looking for is matching suits and colors. The numbers, the value, doesn't matter for the field zone, for the play, okay? It will matter later, but not at this moment. So we've had the call. We're looking for some kind of maybe a fake um, a fake run. We're actually going to pass it, but we're going to fake giving it to the running back. So now we come to the huddle where I'm going to try to explain to the players exactly what's going on. So I draw a second card to represent the huddle. Now, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> what you would prefer is to have the same suit. That's going to give you the best results. Secondly, something which would also be good, but not as good, would be having the same color. So a heart, another heart would have given me the best result. Because here we then have a full match. If a diamond came up, that would be a partial match and give me a okay result. But here, this is no match, which is going to give me a bad result and <laughs> perfect for starting out here. Yeah. Now, depending on what cards you draw and how they match up, depends on whether you get cards in your offense pile or your defense pile. So referencing the book here, for a full match, if we had two hearts, we would get two cards from the action deck face down into the offense pile. So it's giving me cards for the offense. Now, I can also choose to place one card in offense and one card in the spotlight pile. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the spotlight pile is something that you can depend on at any time, really, to give you bonus cards for the exchange or the clash. If you have a partial match, in other words, it's the same color, but it's a different suit. So in this case, if the second card here was a diamond and it's a partial match, then I would get one card from the action deck into the offense and nothing for the spotlight, no option for the spotlight. Now, in this case, we have no match at all. It is not the same suit. It's not the same color. It is no match. And this is bad because in this case, I will place one card from the action deck 
into the defense pile, which gives a bonus for the other team, which is not good. However, we can choose to spend time in the huddle, for example, it would be maybe taking a little bit more time to explain to the players, because maybe I see confusion in their eyes as I'm trying to explain what we're going to do. So spending a bit of time means you lose one of your cards temporarily, but again, it also hastens up the clock, yeah? This is all you get. The time is all dependent on the cards, number of cards. But if I spend a card, because I, I want to change this. I don't want to give the defense cards to begin with. So what I do is I spend time. So I put one card into the time pile. I then discard the card that I don't want. And I draw a new card. Now, that is perfect. Because now I have a full match, which means I get two cards either in the offense pile or one in offense and one in spotlight. Now what I'm going to do just to play safe to begin with is I'm going to put two cards into the offense pile. If this card had then come up a diamond I would have got one card in offense but if this had been no match again so if this had been in this case a spade or a club I would have put not one card in defense but two you get a penalty of an extra card because you wasted time and you still screwed it up. <laughs> so the Jack of Hearts, what does that give me? History and knock. Okay, so we had a little bit of a problem to explain, but I mentioned when we, when we did it in the last game and then everybody understands what's going on. So I'm using that prompt from the card, the Jack of Hearts, history or knock are the prompts. So yeah, I'm using history. Maybe we did the same thing in the previous game and I just you know, <laughs> reminded the guys. So this is the huddle. We've explained what's going on. Next comes the snap. So the ball's in play. Everything gets come to life as the game gets rolling. So again, we draw another card. <gasps> wow, this doesn't normally happen to me. We've got another full match. So that means, again, I can either put two cards into the offense pile or one and one in the spotlight. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put one in the spotlight and one in the offense. Now, why am I doing that? Well, I can use this later. This is like a, a backup for whenever I get a really bad set of cards. Once the play is over, I'm going to be comparing these cards and looking for the highest. So having more cards, obviously, gives me more chance of having higher results. It can still go pear-shaped. <laughs> so what are we going to do now? Okay, so now we go to, from the snap, we go to the handoff and the read. So depending on the pass or run, you can either hand off the ball or analyze the defense. So I'm going to pretend to hand off the ball to the, to the running back and then look up and look for a wide receiver that I'm planning to throw to. So how does that go? Not good. Oh, no, that's no match. All right, so at the moment, if I leave it like this, defense is going to get one card. I could spend another card in time. So I could put a card from here to time and then draw again. But again, remember, if this is a no match again, instead of one card being added to defense, I'm going to lose two cards, um, which could be deadly because I've still got one more, one more part to go for the play. Um, ooh, I think I'll try it. Okay, so I'm going to try and change that. So I'm going to spend a bit of time just to have a better look around. This goes into discard. I draw again. Ah, nuts. All right, so because I spent time, tried another card, I have to put two cards in defense instead of one. Maybe I should have <laughs> just gone with it. Right, so that didn't work very well. Now, in terms of narrative, what do we get here? The three of clubs. Three of clubs, redemption or solitude? Solitude. Um, okay, so maybe I, I hand it off. I hand it off to the running back, but maybe my offensive line is not holding back the defense as well as they ought to, and I'm kind of feeling very sort of um, out in no man's land, obvious target kind of thing. Maybe that's what that represents, right? And then we come to the last part of the play: run or pass. So this is the core execution of your chosen play, where everything comes together, hopefully. So we draw, we get, oh, nice. Now, it doesn't matter that these are hearts. 
What I'm concerned with is the previous card. So this is a full match. So again, I get two cards from the action deck. Now I can place both of them in offense. Now what is it at the moment? It's 3-2. So it could be 4-2 and I could put one into the spotlight pile. Or it could be 5-2. I think I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to put them both in offense. Right, that is one play. This is our first down play. What we do now is we need to compare both piles of cards, the offense and the defense. And for this, we are now looking for the numbers. So the defense comes over here, the offense come here. Now, I do have more cards in offense than defense, so I do stand a better chance of having high cards, but it is not guaranteed. So what do we have for offense? What we are looking for is the highest card. Aces are high. So in this case, we have, we got queen high. So that's my highest card and that's my offense. We now look at the defense. Oh, typical. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> right, well, this is not good. Now, this is what we call the clash. After all that work, what actually happens? Now, even though the defense only had two cards, they actually have the higher card, which is not good. So it doesn't go perfect for me. So what we now have to do is we have to check. Again, it's in, it's in the rule book here, all the rules about the clash. What if the offensive card is higher? Full match, partial match, no match. If the defense card is higher, full match, partial match, no match. Yeah, this isn't good at all. <laughs> Right, so in this case, the defense has the highest card. Now, that's not the end, because we also have to see whether it is a full match, partial match, or no match. And again, it makes a big difference. So in this case, the defense has the higher card, but it is no match. So again, you can, I don't think you can actually see on the book here, it's too small. But if the defense card is higher, no match, the defense stopped the play with no loss of yardage. Place one card from the discard pile face down onto the defense pile and advance the down counter. So in this case, we basically didn't make any yardage at all. We may have even lost a little bit of yardage. So what happens now is that we have to go to second down. All of these cards are now placed in discard. We shuffle. Not a very good shuffler, sorry. And we are told that we have to place one card from the discard face down into the defense pile. So, basically that just shows a little bit of momentum towards the defense after that first play. They stopped us, they're feeling good. We're feeling a little bit down because we didn't get anywhere. The throw, maybe the throw was incomplete. Right, and we then go to the second play. The next play, which is now second and... Pretty much second and ten probably. So we do exactly the same thing. So let us draw. Okay, so the first card doesn't really matter in terms of the mechanics, but in terms of narrative, it can make a difference. So ten of diamonds, what's ten of diamonds? Poise, retreat. Right, so I'm trying to keep, keep the chins up. I'm trying to keep everybody to think positive. Relaxation, motivation. So I don't know whether I'm going to go call exactly the same run. Maybe this time we'll try a run. Yeah. So, like I say, no real card mechanics in terms of the first card. We now draw for the huddle, the second card. We get a perfect match again, a full match. So again, two cards, either in offense or one in offense and one in spotlight. But since the defense already has one card, I'm going to put both into offense. We're carrying on with the snap. Oh, that's not good. Five of clubs. Respect and struggle. Um... Maybe I'm struggling to keep their attention. Maybe I'm struggling to keep their, their motivation high a little bit. Now, this is no match. What that's going to mean is defense is going to get one card. I could, again, I could use time to redo the card. But if I fail again, if I get no, no match again, they're going to get two cards. Uh, another point, another point of, uh, I need to highlight is for every step of the play, you can only use time once. Um, should I? Do I want to risk... Because at the moment, I'm still outnumbering. If I use this, it's going to be 2-2. Two, two. 
If I spend time and screw it up again, it's going to be 3-2. Um, I'm just going to carry on. So defense gets one card. Right, now we're at the handoff, the read. Okay, so this is not a full match. It is a partial match because it's the same color. So I get one card in offense. So it's now 3-2. to two. Ooh, Still a bit tight. But we're coming now to the run, the pass, the last part of it. And we get nuts. No match. So what would that do? Well, what that would do at the moment is it would give defense another card, which would make it three against three. I do have my spotlight pile that I can add to mine. It's just one card, though. I think I'm going to... Should I risk it? <laughs> I'm going to spend some time. I'm going to spend some time. So that goes into discard. We... No. All right. Two cards of defense. That didn't work very well, did it? Right. So... Defense have got four cards. Offense has got three. I may need to use the spotlight. Right, let's see what we've got. We have... Oh, okay, that's not too bad. We've got a king high. That's not too bad at all. Yes. Excellent. They have an eight high. So I win. And we have to take a look in terms of the match. So the offensive card is higher and we have a partial match. Spades and clubs. Gain a first down but less yardage. Maybe we get 12 yards or 11 yards. Place one card from the discard pile face down onto the drive pile and reset the down counter. So we got the first down. Maybe we got 11 or 12 yards. Very, very close, but we got a little bit of extra yardage. So we reset to first down. All these cards now get placed into the discard pile. Which is getting bigger. Dum, dum, dum. Okay. And we get one card from the discard pile face down into the drive pile. Now, the drive pile, these cards are what you're going to be using when you try to score. And we'll go through, the, through that when it comes to a point when I can actually make a score. Because having one card is not a good idea. I'll show you why a bit later when we actually come to do scoring. But it's now first down and 10. We're down to the next play. Let's carry on. So Jack of Spades. Jack of Spades is what? Echo Dissonance. All right, so the positive prompt is Echo. Maybe we want to try the same thing again. Maybe we want to try exactly the same play to Echo what we just did. <laughs> Maybe. Right, so now we're at the huddle. Ah, oh, we've got no match. Okay, I'm not going to risk time. It's one card in the defense because it's no match. Snap. Oh, perfect. Excellent. So I'm going to put two into offense. Nice. Hand off and read. Oh, nuts. That didn't go very well. Queen of spades. Edge distraction. All right, so as we're doing the handoff and as I'm reading things, I'm, I'm kind of getting distracted by the cheerleaders. <laughs> I'm getting distracted by the opposing team's cheerleaders, maybe. They're <laughs> it's like something from, what's that movie? The Replacements with Keanu Reeves when the, when the cheerleaders distract the other team. <laughs> uh, but it's not going well. So again, I have a choice. I can either put one card into defense, which would make it 2v2. That's a bit risky. Or again, I could spend some time to sort of <clears throat> compose my thoughts and get everybody focused again. Um... Two versus two. And then I just got to rely on that last one. That's always a bit risky. So I'm going to spend some time, discard that one. Come on! Ah, nuts. Oh dear, those cheerleaders really are affecting my team. That's not good at all. Um, all right, we're down to the last part here. Run pass where we actually get it going. Oh no, 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 no. Right, at the moment it's three versus two. I need... I really need to do this, so I'm... Oh, God, come on. Oh, yes, excellent, excellent, excellent. We get a full match, I get two cards. Right. Defense has three cards. Offense has four cards. Right, what's the defense got? Ooh, no, that's not good. They got queen high. Offense. Oh, no, what a bad set of cards. Um... I think I'm going to have to use... Oh, that's terrible. I'm going to use my spotlight pile. I'm going to use this, this spotlight card to kind of help me 
Uh, it doesn't help me. Okay. <laughs> it's just as bad. All right. So defense wins. And it is a no match. Defense stops the play with no loss of yardage. Place one card from the discard pile face down onto the defense pile and advance the down counter. Dang it. It's what happened last time, isn't it? All right. So they completely stopped the run. They, they read it. They know what we were going to do. They stopped the run at the line of scrimmage. And the defense is laughing. They're laughing at us. Maybe it's a special play they arranged with the cheerleaders. So again, we shuffle the discard pile. Now, if you play this on the computer, on the virtual tabletop, it does all the shuffling and everything for you. So <laughs> one benefit, I suppose. And that comes free with the package when you buy the game. So there's one card goes onto the defense pile. So they're starting on the next play with a little bit of an advantage. That's not good at all. Right, now, let's try again. Ace of spades, ace of spades. Maybe a pass to the tight end. Maybe the tight end will run behind, run behind the linebackers and I can pass to the tight end, maybe. But let's see what happens. In the huddle, we get a partial match. They seem to understand what I'm trying to get them to do and trying to understand what the play is. So as a partial match, we get one in the offense pile. Next. Oh, so nice. Okay. That's a full match, which means I should be getting two cards into offense, but I've only got one card left in the action deck. So what happens there is we have to re redo the action deck. We have to shuffle the discard. Again, I'm not a very good shuffler. So we shuffle that. And that comes, put this on top. That now becomes our new action deck. We get two cards into our offense or one and one. Um, no, I'm going to put them both here. And because we used up the action deck, the clock gets turned. So we've got one minute 30 left. Right, what's next? Next we have the handoff and read. Dang it. Ah, dang it. Um, what have we got? We've got three... Three against one. At the moment, it would be three against two. Um, see, I, I can't get these cards back until the un, until the opponent gets possession. Um, which again, I'll show you when it happens. Um, I'll, I'll keep it. Okay. Last card. Ah, oh, nuts. Okay, I'm gonna spend time. Yes. Right. Now, what is it at the moment? We've got two in defense. We've got three in offense. Uh, I'm going to play safe. I could have put one here and one here, but I'm going to play safe and put them both into offense. Right. So we've got two cards in defense. We have got five cards in offense. What's defense got? Nine high. Okay. Or we got an ace high. Very nice. We've got ace high, and it's a partial match. So offense card is higher. Partial match. We gain a first down, but less yardage. Again, maybe we just run 11 or 12 yards. So, reset the down counter. We get one card from the discard pile face down into the drive pile. Okay, nice. So all these cards go into the discard pile. Discard pile is not very big, but I know there's an ace in here somewhere. And again, the, the card values will be important when I do scoring. So it's very important that you shuffle this discard pile so you don't put the good cards on top and cheat. <laughs> right, so we get one card into the drive pile. Now, at the moment, I've got two cards in the drive pile. And to be honest, still mm, risky to try and score. Again, I'll show you that when we get to it. We're going to carry on. So... Ace of Clubs. What's the Ace of Clubs? Protection Silence. Okay, so maybe here I'm going to be doing maybe Shotgun Pass. I need protection from my offensive line to protect me as I'm trying to pick out the wide receiver. Right. Huddle. Are the, are the, are the guys going to understand what I want them to do? Yes, they understand perfectly. Look at that. Right. Two cards into offense. Snap. Nuts. Um... I'm not going to risk... Okay. Uh, hand off re... Oh, dear. Come on. Come on. Oh, look at that. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So it's now four against one. And... Uh, I'm just going to risk it. 
Right, defense has two, we have four. Okay, how is this play gonna go? Oh no, queen high. Oh no, oh no, oh, this is bad. I don't have a spotlight either, oh nuts. And it's a full match, that's really not good. Right, if the defense card is higher and it's a full match, the ball is live. Perhaps a fumble or a potential interception. Follow the live ball rules. Yeah, the ball comes loose. That's really not good. So now we need to go to the live ball rules. Oh dear. Right, to resolve live ball, simply reveal two cards from the action deck. One for offense and one for defense. And determine which is higher and see what happens. Completely random in terms of how this is going to turn out. Oh no. Defense gets an eight. We get... A jack. Yes, we get higher. Right. Higher partial match. The offense recovers the ball and advances, but not enough for a first down. Oh, no. Okay, so add one card from the discard pile onto the offense. Oh, dear. Well, we've got a little bit of momentum, but we're not getting, we're not getting any more cards in the drive pile just yet. But at least we didn't lose the ball. If you lose the ball, it goes to the opponent's turn, and they have the potential to score. Right, again, I'm gonna show you all the offensive stuff, the scoring stuff later as it happens. So, uh, add one card from the discard face down onto the offensive pile. Uh, advance the down counter. Ah, uh, nuts, okay. So now it's second down. We didn't lose it at least. <laughs> and we do have a slight advantage in the next play. Right, what do we got? Ace of hearts. Uh, fame, doubt. Mm. Yeah, all right, uh, I think this time we're gonna try another run. So we're gonna try the huddle. Oh, perfect understanding, excellent. We get two cards, I'm gonna put that in offense. The snap, not good. The handoff and read, perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually do one there and one in the spotlight because at the moment I have four against one. And the run pass is not good at all. <laughs> So, damn it, no match. Okay, so we've got four against two for the clash. Seven high. Ooh, Ooh nine high. Okay, uh, but it's a partial match. Okay, so clash. We are the higher. We've got a partial match. We gain a first down, but less yardage. Uh, place one card from discard into drive. Okay, so... Add these and reset the down counter. Okay, good. So second down, we managed to get maybe 11 or 12 yards, maybe 13 yards. So we get a first down. Now we do add one card to the drive pile to represent I'm getting closer, getting easier to actually score. So I've got three. Do I want to risk scoring? I think I will. So what I'll do is after, after any clash, uh, instead of starting a new down phase, what I can do is attempt to score a touchdown or a field goal. Now, a field goal will be worth one card here. A touchdown will be worth two cards here. So obviously, it makes a lot more sense to try and go for the touchdown. However, here's the thing. When you try to score, you take your cards from the drive pile. And the defense will then take a number of cards from the discard pile. Now, if you're going to try for a field goal, which will be worth one card in terms of scoring, the defense will take one card from discard and you will compare. Yeah, highest wins. Um, if you try to go for a touchdown, the defense will get two cards from the discard pile. Now, I have one card in my spotlight pile, which I can use to boost if I need to. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna try for a touchdown. A Little bit risky, <laughs> not gonna lie, a little bit risky, because the defense is gonna get two cards from this discard pile. One, two. If it's not preferable, I can actually use that to help me. So the defense defending, oops, defending against the touchdown has, oh no. That's real. Oh, no. oh dear. They got an ace. Mm. I've got
got a jack. Uh, I think I need to use this. This has to be an ace. Nah, dang it. All right. All right, so we screw it up. <laughs> um, we tried for the touchdown. Okay, the defense is higher, and it's a no match. A tough stand by the defense. They stop the offense without a, a loss of yardage, showing resilience and determination. Advance the down counter. Yep. Um, and continue to the next down. Damn it. Uh, again, all, all of these descriptions in terms of full match, partial match, and no match, it's all listed down here to explain exactly what happens. So essentially nothing happens. Uh, an incomplete pass when I try to throw into the touchdown area, something along those lines. But rather than not scoring, the, the thing that's going to be annoying is that now I've got to build up that drive pile again in order to try and score. Ah, oh, nuts, I missed. Okay. But it's st we've still got possession. These are going to discard. I've got to build this up again now. Right. Next play. Uh, let's try a run. Let's play it a bit safe. I'm not doing very well at passing, so maybe we'll try running again. So we get a full match. Nice. Two cards into offense. Good, good, good. Uh, snap. Oh, perfect. But again, action deck has run out. So time continues. We've got one minute left. Oh, dear. But we have a full match again, which is good. Oops. Right, but we do get two more cards. I think I'm going to put them into offense. Next card is partial. And next card is no. Okay, never mind. Okay, so bonk, bonk. Right, defense has a four high. I think we should be able to beat that. Uh, we have a jack high. Now, what do you do? Let's say, for example, that I'm, I have a four high, okay? What do I do if I have multiple cards as the highest card? What you're looking for is to get the, the best match. So in this case, this is not the best match because it's no match. This would be better to choose because it's a partial match and it gives me a more beneficial result in terms of what I'm looking at. So you always have to try the most beneficial match as much as you can. But luckily, we got a jack high. So we can we win this clash with a partial match. So we get it with a partial match. Gain a first down, uh, one card from discard into the drive pile. Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to get one of these cards into my drive pile. Hopefully, the jack. The jack would be very nice. So we get one card into drive. Okay, we're building up our drive again to try and score. But... The time is running down. So next play. Four of clubs. What's that? Reputation storm. Um, maybe I'm going to try a, a play that I'm well known for. I don't normally do it too often these days because the opposition knows about it. But maybe it's some kind of fancy throw or some kind of side pass. Um, or maybe where I, I hand it off to the running back. He runs to the side, throws it back to me on the other side of the pitch, or the other side of the gridiron, and I throw it. Something along those lines, something a bit special. Um, okay, so we want another club. What do we get? Diamonds, nuts. Okay. Um, now, you could keep doing time, but the thing is, until the opponents get possession of the ball, you ain't getting these cards back. So the deck's getting smaller and smaller every time you use time, which, again, reflects the, 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 the time wastage. So I'm just going to put a card there, just to play a little bit safe. So now we need diamonds. Let me go, oh, swine. Spend time. <laughs> uh, oh, no. See, this is the disadvantage. When it goes wrong, it goes really wrong. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no, I have to. Um, yeah, discard. Oh, no. Oh, this is going to be a terrible result for me. I need, I need at least a partial match, or I'm really screwed. I am really screwed on this one. Oh, dear. So, <laughs> oh, my God, look at that. Oh, my. Oh, two aces, two kings, and a queen. All right, well, I lose. <laughs> I lose badly. Now, if this ever happens, either your offense or the defense has all the cards and you have no cards, you have to treat it as a full match. 
In this case, the defense wins, and it's a full match, which is the worst possible result. So the ball is live, follow the live. Again, a possible interception, a fumble. The opposition could get hold of the ball. This is really not good at all. Oh, dear, oh, me. Right, so live ball. Take two cards from the action deck, one for offense, one for defense. It's completely random, complete chaos. Uh, oh, no. Okay, you guys wanted to see the, op the opponent phase, yeah? <laughs> Here we go. So the opposition wins, uh, no match. The defense recovers the ball, but without any significant yard gain. Go to the opponent phase with one attempt. Right, let us show you how the opponent phase works. <laughs> Right, the opponent phase. So when, when you lose the ball and the opponent gets control of the ball, the first thing that happens is... <laughs> any drive cards you have are discarded. Oh, here we go. I've got to start from scratch again. Um, we've also got to um, make a note of how many attempts because the, the defense or the opponent could get one, two, or three um, opportunities, okay, or three attempts. And this reflects how many chances that they will have in their drive to try and score. Now, what you'll do is you'll have to use one card, put into time to reflect the time that they have on the ball. You then flip one card from the action deck to reveal what happens. It's a king. Now, if it's an ace, they score a touchdown, they get two cards to here. If it's a jack, queen, or king, the opponent scores a field goal. Place one card from the discard pile face down there. Oh dear, that's not good at all. If this is a number card from 2 to 10, we successfully stop the opponent. Now, if, if the opponent doesn't score and they have more attempts, you draw more cards, to, as many attempts as they have, to try and score. Yeah? But as soon as, as soon as they score, you stop. You don't, they don't get any more attempts. Their turn is finished. Um, if they just keep getting number, 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 then nothing happens. We get the ball back. But in this case, they scored a field goal. So now oh, now we need a touch touchdown just to tie. That's not good at all. So when that happens now, every attempt, they get one card into the time as well. That's really not good at all. Right. So when that happens, we have to discard all these cards here. And discard all the cards on the time pile. So those are going to go back into the action deck next time. Uh, and now it's back to my turn. <laughs> so reshuffle this. Oh, this is big now. Oh, dear, oh, dear. We've got to score a touchdown. We have to score a touchdown. Oh, I'm not good at all. But yeah, that's, that's essentially how the game plays. Um, at the end of the game... If it's a tie, you can basically keep playing until somebody scores, or you can essentially just, like we did there in terms of the, the, the live ball, take one card and draw and see who, who gets the highest. But let's continue playing until at least this game's over. Right, that's the discard pile. Here we go. All right, we got a five. Partial. Four. Okay. No match. Mm. Match, okay. Yeah, no no narrative that time. I just did it full speed. Full speed card game. <laughs> if, you, if you do it full speed card game, it's actually a, quite a fast little game. But if you start adding in the narrative, start really thinking in terms of what you want to do, and of course it's going to take longer. All right, so we've refreshed the action deck. Time goes on. We've got 30 seconds left. Um, one more, one more use of the de of the thing, right? Um, we've got a full match. We get two cards. I'm going to do that, right? The defense gets a six high. We have a king high. Again, it's important because you need to see the suits. This is a partial match. Okay, offense card is higher. Partial match. Gain a first down, but less yardage. Um, we set the down counter. One card from discard into drive. Okay, so one card from discard into drive. So we've got, we're back on the drive, building up that momentum, building up that field position to try and get. I've got to get a touchdown, just a tie. And again, this is this is going to be the last time. This is going to be the last time I use the, the, the deck. Uh, once the action deck runs out, that's it. Game over. So we get one in drive. Okay. 
Come on. King of Hearts, what's that? Honor, loss. Ooh. Yeah, honor's at stake if we lose this. Maybe these are our sworn enemies. Ooh. No match. Partial match. Okay, that's better. Oh, come on. <laughs> ah, dang it. Partial. Uh. <laughs> my luck really isn't with my extra time, uh, the time adding on. Dang. Right, the defense has four cards. We have two cards. I do have the show the spotlight over there if I need it. Right, they have... Oh, no. Ace high. The rest is rubbish, look. It's just the ace. I've got ten. I need to use this. No, not good enough. All right, so defense gets higher, and it's no match. Defense, stop the play with no loss of yardage. Place one card from the discard pile face down onto the defense pile. Um, yeah. Dang. That's not good at all. That's not good at all. I need a touchdown just to tie. Oops. I wasted my spotlight. Okay. Here we go again. Next play. Uh, what did we get? I forget. Oh, I think we have to advance it. I forgot what happened there. I think it was a no match, but defense was higher, so we advanced the down card. I think it's second down now. Seven, no match. Uh this really is not helping. Okay, cards are running out. Uh, oh, nice seven six five. Well, that's nice. Uh, that's what have we got so far? Uh, four, four against one, four against two. Okay, okay, good. Um, I'm gonna do that. Right, defense has. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! Oh no! Oh no! I mean, I could use this, but again, it's an ace. What's the chance? Uh, nuts. Okay, so defense higher, uh, partial match. The defense stopped the play and caused a loss of yardage. Place two cards on discard onto the defense pile. Oh no. No, no, no. Advance the down count. It's now third and ten. Oh no, or third and fifteen. That's not good. Oh dear. Shuffle this. Yeah, you will be shuffling the discard pile a fair amount. A fair amount in the game. Uh, again, the virtual tabletop, you won't have to shuffle it at all. Okay. Yeah, I, can, that's, I ain't going to do nothing with a drive part of one, am I? Right, next drive, really running out of cards. <laughs> Come on. I don't think I can. I can't. I don't think I can do it. See, here's the thing. In the game... Uh, if your fourth action deck runs out while you're in the middle of your down phase, which we currently are, I think it might happen, um, shuffle the discard pile into a new temporary action deck so you have enough cards to complete the down, proceed to the clash phase as usual. But here's the thing. It then says once you have resolved the clash phase, after the fourth action deck has been exhausted, the game time is over, go to the end game. If you still have cards on your drive pile at the end of the game time, you won't be able to score... You won't be able to attempt to score. So here's the thing. What's the point of completing the clash of the, 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 the play in the clash if you can't even attempt one more attempt to score at the end? I think that's a little bit... I don't know. I don't think I agree with that. Because going by what the, the rules say, once you have resolved the clash phase, after the fourth, fourth action deck has been exhausted, the game time is over. So there's absolutely no point in doing that final clash. I'm going to do that a little bit differently. What I'm going to do is basically say you have, again, if, you can't, if your fourth action deck runs out during um, your last play, I'm going to say that you have one final chance to score. Yeah, I'm going to do it that way because otherwise there's absolutely no point finishing the play and doing the clash because no matter what happens, you're not going to be able to try and score anyway. So what's the point? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue. This is going to be the last, last play of the game because as soon as this runs out, it goes, time's up, two minutes are over. So we're going to continue. So at the moment... Uh, did I add the cards? I didn't, did I? Um, I'm going to spend time. And, okay, partial match. Okay. Next. Oh, come on. This gets discarded. We have to... Oh, my shuffling skills are terrible. So this is it. This is the end of the game. This is the last play of the game. I have to get a touchdown to score, and I've only got one card in the drive pile. That's really not good at all. Because for a touchdown, they are going to be getting two cards. Right, uh, so we have to redo that. Oh, nuts. <laughs> this is not looking good. I thought I'm going to lose this. No, oh, come on. Oh, oh no, this is terrible. Uh, oh no, come on. Uh, yeah. Okay, right. So this is the last play of the game. And as long as I can maintain possession, I can at least, again, th this is what I think I'm going to do, okay? Because again, the, 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 the rules say otherwise, but I think I'm going to have one last attempt. But... I mean, it could, I could end up actually fumbling the ball depending on what these cards give me. So I'm going to do mine first. I have, ooh, that's quite nice, a king high. Now, what happens if both the cards are the same? Well, then you look at the next card. So my second card is actually pretty good. So if their highest card is a king, it then goes to the second card, and I've got a decent second card. Who? Oh, no, you've got to be kidding me. Damn. All right, let's see. It, it might, I may not have lost position. Let's see what happens. So the defense got higher and it is a partial match. The defense stopped the play and caused a loss of yardage. Placed two cards from the discard pile face down into the defense pile. One, two. And they're not going to need those anyway. And advance the turn counter. Okay, it's fourth down. But like I say, I'm going to have this house rule where if the decks run out on your final play, you get a final chance to score that pivotal touchdown or field goal whatever it needs to do and that, that's what I'm going to be doing here now so what happened is it's now fourth down at the end of the game I have one card in my drive pile which is terrible but I do have one card in the spotlight pile which may benefit me actually it gives me a little bit of hope so the discard pile is there now on fourth down there are limitations in terms of what you can do you can attempt to score if you have cards in the drive pile. You can decide to punt, in which case the play goes to the opponent with one attempt to score. Or you can try and go for it, in which case you do another play um, and then resolve it as per usual. Now, the thing is you need to be careful with this because sometimes you can actually give the opponents more attempts to score during the op opponent's phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and score. Like I say, it's not how it's supposed to be done in the rules, I don't think, but it makes sense to me. Fourth down, seconds left in the game. We've redone the action pile. Time's almost over. We've got seconds left, literally three or four seconds. I have a drive pile of one. I've got to go for a touchdown to try and tie. Touchdown. The opponents get two cards against the touchdown. I'm going to use my spotlight. It's the end of the game. I've got to try it no matter what. It all depends on what these cards are. I have terrible cards. <laughs> I've got a nine high. Oh, no. Every time they get an ace, what is this? All right. So we try... <laughs> We try to score a touchdown. Uh, defense gets higher and it's a perfect match. Nuts. A crushing turn of events. The ball is live. Possibly a fumble or an interception. The defense has outmaneuvered the offense and uncertainty reigns. Go to the live ball. Again, possible fumble, but doesn't matter. It's the end of the game and we lose. Oh dear, we lose badly. <laughs> but that is essentially how the game plays. And like I say, if you don't include the narrative... Again, I've got my little 
got my little narrative prompts there for each card. If, if you don't use the narrative, it's actually a pretty fast game to play. But adding the narrative, creating the story, creating the atmosphere, describing what's happening every play, the spotlight, maybe there's some kind of memorable moment that gets replayed after the game. But it is not a simulation. If you're a fan of American football and you're looking for a simulation game where you pick the tactic, you pick the, the formation that you're going to be playing, you pick certain players based on their stats, this is not that game. It is a narrative card game with very interesting mechanics, very interesting game, but it is not a simulation. Saying that, I really like this game. I'm having a lot of fun with this game. The game doesn't like me very much. I think I've played, I think, 10 times already, and I've won twice. <laughs> so this is actually pretty normal for me. But yeah, two-minute warning from Cesar Capacle. I actually have... Ooh, how many? I've got another three of his games sort of waiting to be put onto the channel. Um, so there's plenty more coming from... Cesar, but this really is a graphically beautiful design layouts, amazing. And like I say, I really didn't do the rule book justice by doing it like this. I did it like this to save ink, but I, I, I've got to tell you that if you can afford to get this printed out properly, and like I say, the package that you that you pay for does include a coupon to get the the, the properly printed version. I think it's Lulu uh, at cost price. If you can afford that, I really do think you've got an amazing looking game with an, like I say, an, an amazing set of mechanics and gameplay. Uh, and like I say, just add as much narrative as you want. I added a little bit here and there as I was playing here. Um, and as, like I say, I, I hope you understood how the game was, was working as I played through. I did go a little bit fast because I wanted this video to be shorter I mean it's already I mean in terms of recording it's already over an hour I'd have to edit this down a little bit but guys I highly recommend this game um, it's it's a little bit expensive I think the recommended price is about $15 um, but like I say at the time of recording is it is on sale it's on 25% off but you do get a lot for that in terms of the components in terms of the um, free v, uh, virtual tabletop version, you've got the, the PDFs, you've got the coupons for the print-on-demand to get everything at cost price. I mean, it, you do get a lot in there. It's just the price is maybe a little bit high. But it's a really fun game. Once you've figured out when to take cards from the action deck, when to take cards from the discard pile, everything else just runs really smoothly. So this game gets two thumbs up from me. It really is a lot of fun. Um, if I, like I say, if the shipping wasn't so high, I would definitely have got the printed uh, rule book and the printed cards. But the shipping for me in my part of the world, the shipping was just, um, <laughs> uh -uh, nope, can't afford it. <laughs> but I'm having a lot of fun as it is with the print and play version. So, guys, check it out on itch. I'll put the link in the description below. I do have more games from Cesar coming up. Um, I do have one um, scheduled for this month, one of his other games scheduled for this month. So yes, anyway, thank you very much for watching. And like I say, I hope I didn't rush through this too fast so you guys can understand. You can always rewind and replay the parts where I'm explaining certain things. But if you do enjoy my channel and the videos that I create, please consider liking and subscribing. Add some comments. Let me know what you think. Are you a football fan? What's your favorite team? Are you excited that the NFL is back? I am, although my, my team's not doing very well at the moment. <laughs> but guys, until the next video, thank you very much. Stay safe. Take care. Cheers.